Thanks again, Julie, for doing this. I'm so excited. I've ever since I tracked you down, almost like I was stalking you to get a hold of you to do this. So, and That's it's and, it, and I've got to thank Jonathan Knight. Actually, is the one that really gave me the idea because I had read the book and I saw that uh, we had a Montana connection. And I was like, I got to find Julia Miller, and here you are. So, thank you so much for doing this. I sure do appreciate it. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Okay, so let, we'll just kind of chat like we did on the uh, the conversation we had uh, last week. First mm -hmm. off, um, just tell us about you. Tell us about you. You're from Billings. I am from Billings. I'm a born and raised Billings girl. I went to Frat and then I went to Central. And then I went to school at Gonzaga. While I was at Frat and Central, I studied Latin. And then when I went to Gonzaga, I qualified to go over to the Gonzaga and Florence program. So it was a really great experience and that I ended up using that later on in my career. After I graduated from Gonzaga, I moved directly to LA and I ended up getting a job working for Michael Douglas and Michael Phillips. And at that time, Michael Phillips was doing uh, Wall Street and um, we, he had been working with Charlie on Wall Street. At the same time, Chris Chesser was getting Major League going and uh, because Charlie had worked with Tom Berenger on Platoon before, and that connection was made at Mercury Douglas Films with Chris Chester, Michael Phillips, and Michael Douglas, part of the team, um, we ended up getting Major League uh, going. And um, before Major League, I actually ended up working on a movie in Chicago called The Tender with John Travolta. And uh, then when I got back, Chris Chester said, hey, you know, there's this movie that we're working on with Charlie Sheen and Tom Berenger have signed on. It's called Major League. Why don't you interview with the director? Because we need an assistant. So I said, great, fine. I'd, I'd love to do that. So I went in, I interviewed with David Ward and um, I got the job. So I was assistant to Mr. Chesser and Mr. Ward on Major League. And while we were filming Major League, um, there was a part that they kept trying to catch and Irby Smith, who did Angels in the Outfield, came up to me and he said, would you be willing to audition for this role? And I said, absolutely. So I did. And uh, they actually auditioned me uh, in a church uh, because we were shooting at a specific location. And uh, so I auditioned and I shot the next day. And you're talking about the famous scene where you walked up to Charlie at the jukebox. Walked up to Charlie at the ju jukebox and said, Wild thing, you make my heart sing. Now, did you get to have uh, any interaction with Charlie before that, or just the day of, walked in and says, Charlie, here's going to be your co-star for just a few minutes? Yeah, I think he was surprised, um, and there I was. Uh, but yeah, no, I had worked with Charlie on the set, and then while we were casting and just getting all ready for the film. That was actually uh, just a clip of the actual total scene. You did an, a whole scene there where uh, Dorn was hitting on you? So the scene itself, I was a, another woman adding uh, fuel to the conflict with Dorn and Vaughn. Um, so I was uh, Roger Dorn's girlfriend when he came into Milwaukee. And um, I immediately see, see Charlie and I actually ended up dumping Dorn to be with Wild Thing. That is so funny. So the part where you're walking up to the jukebox, right before that is where you dumped Dorn and then walked up to the jukebox. Is that how it worked? Yep, I left. I left Dorn, and he was sitting there with with Harris, and um, I just said, uh, you know, I got to look out for myself now. And then I went over to Charlie Sheen and said that line that's been following me for thirty five years. <laughs> We're going to talk about that in just a second. I want to back up. You took a big gamble going to Hollywood. Tell us a story about your dad and when he said to you, when you said, "I want to go out to Hollywood." This was this is fascinating. Yes. So after I graduated from Gonzaga, I said, Dad, you know, I really want to go to L.A. I want to make the most out of that communications degree. And I had done theater at Gonzaga. And Dad said, here's five hundred dollars. Once it runs out, you're coming home. And I I didn't let it run out. I went to a temp agency and interviewed to work for Michael Douglas and Michael Phillips. And Michael Phillips had produced The Sting, uh, which is a David Ward connection because David won an Oscar for The Sting. Um, and he did uh, Taxi Cat, Taxi Driver, uh, and then Close Encounters of the Third Kind. And his ex-wife, her maiden name was Julia Miller. So out of the stack of like 80 resumes they had, he pulled it out and said, let's hire this girl. She's got the same uh, name as my, my ex-wife. So <laughs> that's how I got that, that position. 
That is such a crazy story. All right, so let's let's talk about Major League. It is the 35th anniversary coming up on April 7th, uh, back in 1989. Tell us about uh, David. David it was a lifelong, well, they're the Guardians now, but Indians fan. And the story about how that movie came about is just is just fascinating. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so David was a lover of the Cleveland Indians for a very long time. And, um, you know, a lot of people didn't have faith in them. And he decided to put together a great story with a group of guys, despite their ethnic background, despite their religion, despite all odds against them and nobody believing in them. They came together as a team and even they had everything taken away from them. They had their their fresh towels, their hot water taken away, their therapeutic equipment, their plane was being repaired by duct tape and then they ended up getting a bus. Um, but they still came together and they still came together to win. Absolutely, so it's neat how David, was, I saw an interview one time, he says, well, I guess the only way I'm gonna make the Indians winners is I'm gonna have to ride them into yes. existence as being winners. I thought just that was so cool. Yes. Well, you know, it, it is about the Indians in Cleveland, but it wasn't filmed there. Tell us about the Milwaukee connection on this. So the Milwaukee connection was uh, that the stadium, it was, it was uh, less, it was less expensive to shoot there, but also we had more sunlight at that stadium so we could have longer shooting days. So it was a it was a good uh, location for us, and the local community in Milwaukee really supported us. And one thing to note is that when we shot Major League, there were no cell phones, there were no computers, there was no CGI. So what you saw in the stands was the actual. We actually ended up getting twenty thousand people to show up for one big night. We ended up getting um, giving away a car and we had open concessions and so what you saw was actually real it was it would have been so much easier if we had cgi but if we mm. didn't have that i don't think the movie would have had that kind of heart right no i absolutely agree and uh, something else that i've noticed too that the ball players were all kind of dressed up in winter almost like gear for the final series there but it was like one of the hottest summers on record in milwaukee tell us tell us how hot it got there during that <laughs> Gosh, I want to say it, it got up to the upper 90s, mm. if not more. But when you're underneath the, the studio lights and everybody's running around trying to get ready, it, it lends itself to a, you know, a, a warm summer. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, I tell you what, it, the, the way and the way you shot, I read the book about how you would have to move people around a little bit around the state uh, the stadium to make it look like it was full. And they were like uh, one one row of seats was empty. Then you had the, uh, the, 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 the fans and then it staggered to make it look big. And the way it was shot, you cannot tell. You think that place is absolutely packed. It was brilliant. Well done. Yeah. And, and again, lending itself to the support that we had from Milwaukee, everybody, you know, they, they came and they would just watch us film. And then we would move them around the stadium for specific shots, whether it be, you know, above the dugout or on the outfield. Um, so they were real troopers. So I know you're the wild thing, girl. But besides that, do you have a favorite character from the movie? Um, you know, I, I have to say, I think Harris is pretty funny. Um, the uh, conflict between Harris, Harris and Serrano really gave me a chuckle, but everybody was so talented, like Jim Gammon. Um, there was a big group of people there, like, you know, you've got Charlie Sheen and Tom Berenger, uh, Dennis Hayes, but Wesley Snipes. I'll never forget when Wesley came in to audition. And the minute David saw him, he was like, I, I got to have that guy on the team. And these guys were athletes. They were true athletes. That home run that you saw uh, Pedro Serrano hit on, at the end, that was a real home run. Yes, we're so, here. Yeah. Yes, yes. So it was absolutely amazing. Yeah. So you make a cameo. Chris Chester, the producer, also makes a cameo. He's the one that throws Wesley or um, Willie Mays Hayes out at first in the first game, right? Yes, I believe he played the role of Brewster. Um, hmm. But yeah, he, he was great. Um, God bless Chris. He's no longer with us. We lost him last year. Um, but Chris produced Caddyshack, and he was also an, an athlete. I mean, if you look at Charlie, Charlie's throw was amazing. Mm. He is an athlete. So 
it was amazing to get everyone together and really get the team going, you know? Now, I looked through the movie several times, and there's a scene, I think it's the very last day where it's cut down day, where they do the red tag, and Jake and Charlie, uh, Wild Thing, and Wesley are all outside the the room uh, getting ready to go, and he says, whatever you do, don't celebrate in front of the guys that just died. Now, I, I mentioned that you make a cameo, and Chris makes a cameo. I swear it is probably not that's David walking in behind them. Did David make a cameo, or did he even think about being on camera for this movie? Uh, no, he did not. He okay. was not in the movie at all, actually. So okay. he decided to be behind the camera. He had a busy schedule. He was not only writing it, but he was directing it. So he was quite busy. Now, when you were making the movie, and I've, I've seen several interviews with other directors and whatnot as they're making the movie and they're thinking to themselves, this is going to be the worst movie of all time, or boy, this is going to be a hit. What was the vibe as you were making that movie? Did you have any idea that it would become so loved in part of the Americana, uh, not only just in sports, but just movie lovers in general. Did you have any idea what you had on your hands while you were making it? You know, at that time, I knew it was special because we had a really great group of people involved with, with the film with a passion for baseball and story and relationship. And I think that, you know, the world loves to root for the underdog. And despite all odds, these guys still put it together and won. And working with such a great group of people, I knew that this movie would do the best it could possibly do. But I didn't know that it was going to become one of the biggest baseball movies, sports movies of our time. Yeah, to me, uh, and I'm sure a lot of people think this, it's the greatest baseball movie ever made. Um, just, It's absolutely fantastic. Now, let's go back to your part. How does it feel to be immortalized? on film <laughs> well i i never looked at it that way i looked at it as an opportunity i feel really blessed to have had that opportunity and to have worked with such great people to be involved in that level of creative creativity is something that i definitely miss now you were not only in major league but you were in major league too right you had a cameo in that and tell us about some other stuff that you've done on camera yeah, sure. Um, so I did Major League, and then uh, we went on to the program, and in the program, I played the role of Debbie. And in Major League Two, I was one of the producers, as well as I played the stadium control room operator. Uh, and then after that, I went to work for Bill Nye, the science guy, and then I ended up getting cast in a pilot opposite Scott Bello, uh, Scott Bakula, Maria Bella, Bello, and uh, Timothy Oliphant called Mr. and Mrs. Smith. So I was guest star on that. And then I worked on an episode of Nash Bridges. And then um, I haven't done anything creative like that in a while. So do you still keep in touch with the cast? So I actually saw Charlie uh, at an event in Nashville most recently. And uh, it was funny because he was up on the stage and he kept looking down at me. And then when I went into the back of the green room at the end of the show, he looks at me and he goes, do I know you? And I said, you do. I work for David. And he goes, oh my gosh, yes. He goes, well, it's been about a lifetime. I said, yeah, it has. But it was great to see him. I still keep in touch with David Ward as well. David's an incredible writer. I think he's one of the greatest writers of our time. Sure. Screenwriters. I mean, if you look at the things he's done, Cannery Row, uh, Sleep in, in Seattle, um, The Sting, Major League, Major League too. He worked, he was worked with RJ Stewart on that. Mm -hmm. And um, the script for Major League Three is absolutely amazing. All right. So that is the question I have to wrap up with. I, I would I, I would not be able to walk around this town if I did not ask this question. People would be upset. Please tell us there is a Major League Three in the works. So yes, David has written the script for Major League Three. And it is absolutely amazing. Uh, I actually cried at the end of it because it is so well written and it brings everybody back. So I, I hope one day we do get the chance to get that film made. Do you think it's close? Not as close as I'd like it. We were close a couple of years ago, um, but who knows? Hopefully, maybe, maybe this uh, interview might spur an angel investor, one of your viewers, to reach exactly. out to you, Miller, <laughs> with $45 million to spare. Woo! Fingers are <laughs> crossed. Maybe we can win the lotto or something. You know, working on Major League was one of the greatest joys of my life. Oh, I know. I imagine so. I really, and I really do hope Major League 3 happens. I would really like to see where the guys are now 
in their mm-hmm. journey and that story. Well, the story is absolutely amazing how David weaved all the, all of them back. And I really think that the world misses that kind of nostalgia. Yeah. The, the thing about Major League that a lot of people don't realize is that it was really big in America, but it was big around the world. Mm. It was huge in Asia as well. So it really had a global reach and it touched the heart of many people. So so all the main characters are, he's got all the main guys coming back in the in the third and- Yep, he's got them, all of them coming back. So I'm, I'm just gonna hope that maybe there's there's a studio executive up oh. at the Young Club Club that might see this and be like, yeah, let's get a hold of Miller and we'll get a hold of her and get the movie done. Absolutely, yeah, that would be fantastic. Do you, now, you don't have to tell me or not, but does he have another cameo for you in that movie? Do you pop up or anything? It would be um, so great. I, well, I, 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 not that I'm aware of, but considering this line has been following me around for so long, who knows? <laughs> Well, you know what? Why I got you? If you got a second, I forgot to ask you about that. You know, you you still get recognized as the wild thing girl. Tell us about, uh, you told us a story about how you were in a diner with your sister and some guy kept looking over at you. I was at the Grand Tree in Bozeman, Montana, and I was sitting there having breakfast and this guy sitting next to me kept staring at me. And I was like, you know, my friend he keeps staring at me. And and she's like, hey, why do you keep staring at my friend? And he said, I saw this movie last night major league and she looked so much like the girl that was in that movie and uh i said to him i am <laughs> i am the girl. how often do you have people come up to you and ask you to say that line do you ever get tired of doing that or no i don't you know i was in boston and i was at this big dinner event with my sister and her husband and a bunch of lawyers and there must have been about 60 of them in the room and uh patty said you know my sister was in the movie major league and what did she do and she told them and they said, will you, will you say the line? And so I said the line and they all just cheered. Like they had just seen, you know, the team win. They were so <laughs> excited. It was, it was pretty funny. And I'm really happy to have been a part of it. Well, well, again, I can't thank you enough for being a part of this and let me do this interview. It's just been a thrill of mine. And just speaking from uh, the boy that was 16 years old, when I first saw that movie in theater and you say that line, I'm a very happy man right now. Thank you. Oh, great. <laughs> I am so happy. The next time I come into Billions, we'll have to get together and have lunch. Oh, absolutely. Lunch is on me, I promise. Miller, you make my heart sing.